Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Acer Chromebook C734. Exact model is gonna be below in the description. I'm gonna take you on a teardown and disassembly tour, show you how to get inside and many of the various components you can access once you're in. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip it over to access your bottom case screws. Okay, so there are 11 screws on our bottom case. We're going to remove all of them. Once all the screws are removed, we'll take a small flat pry tool. We'll put it in between our bottom case and the rest of our computer. Don't put it too far in. You could damage some internal components. Keep it on the edge. Go be very careful, but be firm. Go all the way across and pry it off. This one is actually coming up fairly easily. There we go. Just had to get it started. Once your bottom case is removed, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now, as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your project, as well as the replacement parts for this specific model computer, there will be a link above, also below in the description, and it will be a collection of all those tools and supplies that you may need, as well as these replacement parts for this computer. Now before touching anything in a computer, I always remove or at least unplug my battery. A battery is safest to work on when as little power as possible is running through it. Your battery is right down here, along the bottom of your computer, and there are no screws holding it down, so it's very easy to unplug. It plugs into the motherboard right here. This battery has a model number AP18C8K. It's an 11.25 volt battery, 50.29 watt hour. I will have all that information below in the description if you're looking for your own replacement, but I will also include a replacement in that link I told you about with all of the replacement parts for this model computer. So if your computer is like mine, there'll be a small plastic guard here. I'm just gonna peel that up with my plastic pry tool. Carefully peel that back. That will leave this black fabric guard. So I'm just gonna peel that up very carefully and put it off to the side so I can put it back later. And that's where my battery plugs in. Now this goes for any wires and cables in a computer. Try very hard not to pull on the wires themselves. Just manipulate that plug. Wires can be damaged or they can come right out of the plug if you pull them too hard. So instead of pulling on the wires here, I'm gonna put my fingernail or a pry tool on either side of that plug and I should be able to get it out that way. So either side of the plug, pull down, and that's how you unplug your battery. Now that the battery has been removed, or at least unplugged, we can proceed deeper into the computer. These are your speakers here. You have this one in this corner. The wire to that speaker runs through here. It's threaded down through this area to this speaker here, and this speaker plugs into the port right there. As a word of caution, if you are replacing these speakers, Make sure you run the wire exactly as seen in your computer. So take a picture of it first or something so you know exactly how to run it because you don't want it popping out of an area it shouldn't. And then when you put the bottom case back on, you pinch that wire and damage it. And this plug right here, same as the battery, don't pull on the wire to unplug it. Just use your fingernails or a pry tool and wiggle that out of that port right there. Your USB board is right here. It's held down by these screws on your hinge assembly and that one screw on the board, and the ribbon cables to the motherboard go here. Now be very careful when operating these ribbon cable connectors, they're very fragile. Uh, the way to do this, you're gonna take your small, flat, plastic pry tool, and you're gonna come onto this side, the opposite side as, as the ribbon cable. So the ribbon cable is in the middle, so on the motherboard side, you would come at it from this direction, and the USB board side, you would come at it from this direction. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get underneath the black clip and gently pop it up, and that way the ribbon cable can come out. I say to be careful because those black clips are extremely fragile, and if you break them, you probably won't be able to find a replacement for sale online, which would mean that the ribbon cable may not secure down well again. So be very careful of that. This is your Wi-Fi card here. It's integrated into your motherboard, so that cannot be easily removed. The antenna wire come down here and they snap onto the Wi-Fi card. They're just snaps. 
So to get those off, you pull directly up and off of the motherboard. To get them back on, they do need to be at a perfect 90 degree angle and you are strong enough to damage them if they're not at the right angle and you force it. So be very careful when reattaching those antenna wire, get it at the right angle. It may take a little while if you're not used to it, but you will be able to get those back on. The LCD wire comes down through this hinge assembly here, plugs into the motherboard here, and it's the same idea as these ribbon cable clips, only this one opens from the top. So to get that out, we'd put our pry tool here and pop that clip up like that. And then again, to get it back down, you'd push down. Be very, very careful. Again, you don't want to break that clip. You have another clip here for your keyboard ribbon cable and a smaller one here for your touchpad ribbon cable. Same operation. You slide the pry tool under it, pop it up, and then put it down. And the motherboard has these screws remaining here to get the motherboard up. So that's the end of the video. If you have any questions, make sure you check out the FAQs below in the description first. It can save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please feel free. I do try to get to those at least a couple times a day. Also, please remember to like and share if this was helpful, if you think it can help someone else. And please subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer videos or if you just want to keep me on hand to answer any future computer questions. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.